the amortization formula, also known as the loan payment formula. What I'm going to do in this video is show you how this formula is derived. And the formula itself is PMT equals P times R over N, all over this big quantity with a 1 minus a smaller quantity, 1 plus R over N, raised to the negative N times T power. So the PMT, what does that stand for? Well, it's your regular payment made at the end of the period. So if you're paying monthly, it's at the end of the month. And if anybody's ever taken out a loan where they say, oh, you don't have to pay until this time, it's like a month later, you're like, oh, I get my first month free. No, you're just paying at the end of the period instead of the beginning. So uh, the P itself is the principal, just the amount borrowed. R is the annual interest rate given as a percentage, but you will convert it to decimal to make the formula work. N is the number of compoundings per year, and then T is the number of years. One thing to keep in mind with this formula, the expectation is that the number of compoundings and the number of payments made per year are going to be the same. So if you're compounding monthly, you're making monthly payments. If you change that where maybe it's compounding monthly and you're making weekly payments, it uh, requires a different formula. And we won't be discussing that in this video at all. So the payment and the number of compoundings, there'll be the same amount of each of those per year. So how does this formula work? And where does it come from? So our goal is to get to this. And what I'm gonna do is start out just by thinking about what the bank is expecting. And the bank, what they're thinking is that, okay, we're putting some money into these people, you know, whoever they're loaning it to, and over time they're gonna pay us back. And for it to make sense to the bank, they have to get back eventually what they would have earned if they would have put that money into a compound interest account. So if you look up here at this formula, you do see shades of compound interest in that denominator. It's not exact because of that negative power, but there are some shades of compound interest there. So compound interest will be a part of this. Also looking at the formula, if you watched my savings plan, the annuity formula, the ordinary annuity formula video, you would have seen that there was some similar stuff going on as well. So both those things are actually going to come into play here. And the idea is that the bank is expecting some amount in the future, some future amount that they would get if they just put that principal into a compound interest account and let it grow. So we're using compound interest here times this original, you know, the borrowed amount. So the bank wants to realize that in the end. And how they're going to realize it is by you giving them payments that technically they will turn around and earn interest on. So those payments that you're putting in, even though you're just paying a flat amount, same amount every month or every week, the bank, in the way this formula is developed, is kind of expecting like, okay, we're going to take their payment that they just gave us and we're going to put it into this annuity formula that will grow and match the same total that they would realize from this compound interest that I've written down. So they're going to have some future value over here that they're going to expect that you're going to basically provide by paying payments that they will essentially turn around and put into an annuity in a roundabout way. So the annuity, you're going to take this payment then and you're going to multiply it by 1 plus R over N raised to the NT power, N times T more importantly, and then minus 1 and then all over that R over N. So both of these amounts will be the same and it will allow the bank to realize what it would have earned just by putting that loan amount into a compound interest by having you pay them some money over time that they will turn around and put into an annuity account. So these totals will end up being the same over time. And now what we're going to do, you know, if I look up here, I kind of see like all the pieces are there. I got the payment, I got the principal, I got those R over Ns, I got the N times T powers. You know, they're all kind of here and there, you know, they're, they're in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for payment. I'm going to do this mathematically. And the easiest way to do this with payment 
being multiplied by this big old thing here, I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal of that fraction on both sides. So I'm going to get on the left side, p times 1 plus r over n to the n times t power. And I'll make a fraction here. So when you do the reciprocal, you flip the fraction. So r over n will actually get multiplied by the top. And then all this stuff will get multiplied into the bottom here. And then this will equal just the payment, because when you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, it becomes 1. It's like 1 over 3 times 3 over 1. You get 3 over 3, and that's 1. So 1 times the payment is just payment. All right now, this is, you know, I see some shades of what I got up here, you know, but not quite there yet. I got some too much stuff. So what we're going to use here, I'm going to just move this around just a little bit, but we're going to use a little mathematical trick to help simplify this down. So I'm going to move the payment over to this side and I'll move this over to this side. And essentially what I'm going to do is multiply the top and the bottom by something that will get rid of that 1 plus r over n to the n times t power. And whatever I do to the top, I gotta do to the bottom if I'm going to maintain equality between my expressions. So I'm gonna have this down below and I'm gonna multiply by one. It's gonna be a weird looking one, but it's gonna be a one. Just like if you had one half over one half, that's still one, right? You know, you divide something by itself, it's one. But what I'm gonna do here is multiply by one over one plus r over n to the n times t power. And I'm gonna put the same thing down below because I essentially, as I said, I wanna just multiply by one so I don't really change anything that, per se, you know, necessarily, but it will change the look of it and allow me to get r over n as the only extra thing with that principle in the numerator, like what I saw, oops, sorry about that, in the original formula. No, no, that's I was being squirrely, but I only have r over n up there. So by doing this step, multiplying by one over r, one plus r over n to the n times t power, it's gonna allow this to cancel out, you know, that extra one that's in the numerator. So if we come down here, we just distribute across the top here, multiply across the top, not so much distribute, but just multiply. And we'll get P, uh, the one plus R over N to the NT will go over this one. And that'll be the same thing or the same thing, which is just one. So that kind of essentially just goes away for all intents and purposes. And you have R over N left. Down below, I'm gonna take this one and distribute into here and distribute into here. So I will be distributing into those parentheses. Now I will get in the parentheses a one from the one over one plus r over n to the n times t power times one plus r over n to the n times t power. And then I'll get minus one times that fraction down there is gonna be this. And now that's really close. You know, if I look up top again at what I got up here, the numerator is looking great. Denominator, uh, we got that little negative power and it's not a fraction and I got this in a fraction. So this is where an exponent rule comes in. And the exponent rule says, if you have a fraction with something raised to a power in the denominator, you can move it up to the numerator as long as you change the sign of the power. It's an exponent rule, works all the time. So basically what I'm gonna do here is just move that little piece that's in the denominator of the denominator. I'm just gonna move that up to here essentially. And when I do that, I'm gonna get one plus R over N and I need to change the sign on the power fitting with the exponent rules, and now we have the formula that I was shooting for. And that is how you derive it. So, you know, using some compound interest and annuity equivalency will allow you to solve for the payment you need to make to pay off a loan. All right, well, I hope that helps you understand where the formula comes from, and thanks for watching this video.